Well, after the glitches, the ad blitzes the midterm elections. And Obamacare critics, they're taking on vulnerable Democrats in several new ads. But the question is, are they effective? Pollster Frank Lawrence is here to break it all down for us. Well, you know, listen, Obamacare is not necessarily popular these days. It would seem that anyone who backed it is in trouble. And it's particularly unpopular in states south of the Mason-Dixon line who didn't vote for him in the first place, and they're not happy with what they've got. But the key to these ads, and you're going to decide whether you, you feel that they've achieved it or not, are they realistic? Do they paint an alternative picture to what we have right now? And are they credible? You need all three components to make a successful ad. All right, tell you what, let's take a look at one of them. Tillis versus Hagen. This is a North Carolina race. In the private sector, businesses are built on accountability. But accountability is a foreign language in Washington. Obamacare is a disaster, but the president won't admit it. The debt's out of control, and neither party has stopped it. Kay Hagan enabled President Obama's worst ideas. She refuses to clean up his mess. So you and I have to clean up hers. I'm Tom Tillis. I approve this message, and that's why I'm running for the U.S. Senate. All right, let me tell you what jumped out at me. Okay. He said neither party. Uh, so it seems like he's also not just anti-Obamacare, but jumping on the anti-politician bandwagon as well. And he had the most important attribute of any ad right now, accountability. It is the number one value that Americans want in Washington. They think it's missing from Congress and the White House, from Republicans and Democrats. Brilliant ad. Very effective. That's one of the first ads of 2014. That's going to be very effective. Okay, I want to take a look at another one. One of the big names in this whole Senate thing is going to be uh, Landry down in, in Louisiana. We've got American for Prosperity. Uh, they have an anti-Landry uh, ad. Let's take a look at that. If you like your current insurance, you keep that insurance, period, end of story. Those individuals who like the coverage they already have will be able to keep their current plan. This is a very accurate description of this bill. But now, Louisianans are finding out that they lied. Basically, you said what the president said. Any regrets? No, Wolf, whatsoever. Tell Mary Landrew, it's about people, not politics. Obamacare hurts Louisiana families. I, that felt that felt effective to me. And, and Barack Obama is very unpopular in Louisiana. What she should be doing right now is acknowledging that the plan has got its problems. She should not be standing behind the president because clearly you can't keep your health care necessarily. She made a big mistake there, and she needs to walk it back. And for her campaign, her success depends on her walking it back now in what, January, not in June. On that note, let's take a look at an ad that she's put out to see if she did effectively walk it back. I am Mary Landrieu and I approve this message. Hundreds of thousands of people across the country losing their current coverage. The administration is under pressure to act fast. What I've said to the president is, you told them that they could keep it. Landrieu has introduced the Keeping the Affordable Care Act promise. I'm fixing it, and that's what my bill does, and I've urged the president to fix it. Senator Landrieu says President Obama needs to stick to his word. This is a promise that you made. This is a promise you should keep. Ouch. I mean, listen, it's certainly to your point. She went after the villain in all of this, uh, at least in Louisiana, but did she, did she effectively distance herself? Well, two points. One is I'll be surprised if she was invited to the White House Christmas <laughs> party this year. And, and second is that you've got to give details. And I'll give you as a key on advertising. It's got to have three facts, three pieces of evidence that people will believe. She says she's fixing it. She didn't say I'm doing A, B, and C. And without that substance... It's just politics. And, and, and let's face it, too. I mean, she's not necessarily fixing it. She, she maybe, you know, presented a bill. Uh, and But what else could she do? It, you know, maybe there aren't these three facts that, you, that she, she call doesn't up. have a choice. There are, there are things that she can change in that legislation, and she has not supported them. She's trying to walk this fine line to keep Democrats on her side and still win over independents. If you walk the center of the road, it's like driving. You get run over. She's got to be more definitive, more explicit. I'm going to change these three components. So deflecting from her to President Obama is not, not enough. It's not, not enough. enough. Not in Louisiana, not in 2014, not with his favorability fall, falling. Now, she's a great campaigner, and do not assume. I think she's got a fair shot at getting reelected, but not with an ad like that. I want to talk to you about uh, Ted Cruz because... Um, I think he came out of 2013 with a fair amount of momentum behind him. Uh, a lot of the things he warned about, 
uh, you know, work, you know, came to fruition with Obamacare. The government shutdown didn't hurt the economy. I want to go to a, a piece that you're working on because I think it's really interesting. I want to share it with the audience. There is a problem in Washington, and the problem is bigger than a continuing resolution. It's bigger than Obamacare. It's even bigger than the budget. The most fundamental problem, the frustration, is that the men and women in Washington aren't listening. If you talk to the man and woman on the street, that's, the, that's the, the message you hear over and over again. Why don't they listen to me? Why don't they hear what we have to say? They aren't listening to the millions of people, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, Libertarians, across the spectrum who say our elected officials, they get to Washington and they stop listening to the people. So the graph we were looking at, it shows people agreeing with them or being positively impacted by the message as the graph was moving. Both of those, and I want to draw a distinction here. That was the best political soundbite of 2013. Regardless of whether you support or oppose his tactics and his techniques, that language about Washington not listening did better than anything we tested from any senator, any congressman, or the president. That is the number one rhetoric, and I'll the, tell you something. Congress and the White House need to pay attention to those words and listen. The, the, okay, well, the right-hand column is uh, that the, the GOP was at 96. To me, the Dem hitting 76, With that Cruz. might be scary. With Ted Cruz. Uh, this, this is remarkable, and this is what 2014 is going to be about. Who's listening and learning from the American people? And I'll tell you something, 2016 may be part of that as well. All right. Ted Cruz had the best soundbite of the year. Frank Lentz, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Pleasure. Hey, break the